Hi, everyone. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. Um, we're going to hang out for just a minute and see if anyone else pops in to join us today. We are going to be talking about recent releases in both middle grade, YA, and two adult books that I've read in the last month that I really, really loved. So let's see if anyone else is awake on this very, very rainy Wednesday um, just before we get started. I hope you guys are doing well. Hi, Lake Bluff. It's good to see you. We're just going to give everybody um, another minute or two to pop in, um, and then we're going to get started talking about some books that I've read recently that I liked a lot. Doo, 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 doo. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started, I guess. I am going to turn the camera around. There we go. So the first one I want to talk to you guys about is a middle grade book called The Wolf of Cape Fen by Juliana Brandt. And this is on the list is one of my favorite books of the year. It is a fantastic mystery. It's a fantastic sibling story. It starts off um, in the town of Cape Fen, which is in on the coast of New England. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome. So Cape Fen is on the coast of New England, and they also have what, for simplicity's sake, I will call a the resident witch. <laughs> they have um, someone called the Baron Dyer, who makes deals with locals, makes deals with tourists, and then you have to pay some sort of incredibly significant price. All right, And the main characters, Eliza and her younger sister Winnie, they know better than to deal with the Baron Dyer. Um, they've been told their entire life that the Baron Dyer is incredibly dangerous. He makes um, incredibly unfair deals, but the first frost has come, and that means that the dire wolf, which is this guy right here on the cover, it's so beautiful, uh, the dire wolf is going to come and start hunting for the Baron's uh, dues, the Baron's prizes. And even though neither Eliza or Winnie have made a deal, the dire wolf ends up coming and attempting to take, attempting to eat Eliza's younger sister, Winnie. Um, and they, Eliza realizes that somebody has made a deal and they have put her younger sister up as collateral. So she has to find out who made a deal with Baron Dyer. She has to figure out how to get out of this terrible bargain, even if it means making a bargain with the Baron Dyer herself. So that's The Wolf of Cape Fen. It came out um, last month at the very end of March. And it is, oh, it was just such a good middle grade action adventure. And then one of my other fantastic middle grade books from this year is by Allie Carter. She has written a ton of fantastic YA books like um, The Gallagher Girls and High Society. And this is her first foray into middle grade books. And she wrote The Winterborn Home for Vengeance and Valor, um, which I loved. It is so funny. It's got such a great group of kids um, in this book. Basically, I think the best way to pitch it is if you imagine Bruce Wayne at Wayne Manor, right? He opens Wayne Manor up and makes it an orphanage. So all of these kids are orphans. Um, Mr. Winterborn has passed away and in his will, he left the house um, to be opened for all of the orphans in the town where he is, except one day, um, she didn't mean to start a fire. She didn't even knock over the vase, but our main character discovers that Mr. Winterborn is alive and well and in hiding in the basement, sharpening his swords and preparing to enact vengeance on everyone who wronged him in his life. Yeah, it's got a really cute cover, Stephanie. I think so too. And it was just so funny. It's got great found family themes. None of the kids are related, but they really, you know, stick up for each other and they've got a fantastic sibling bond. So yeah, if if Batman took in a bunch of or orphans besides, you know, just Robin, that would be this book. All right, next up is Mad, Bad, and Dangerous to Know by Samira Ahmed. And I love this book, but it's really hard to uh, pitch it well. I don't, I don't know a great way to pitch it. It takes place in two points in time. One of them is modern, um, with a girl who is studying abroad, and she ends up getting stranded in Paris after um, probably ruining her chance to get into her dream school program. Um, she has been ghosted by her boyfriend, but she ends up picking up all of these letters from a woman, another Muslim woman, who 200 years ago has been attempting to hide 
uh, her great love of art from her husband. And it sort of ends up with a chasing Vermeer style um, art mystery to it uh, with an American who's been stranded in Paris. Um, that's really the best way I know to describe it without giving anything away. It won a bunch of awards. Um, it got a lot of stars. It is just really, really a fun sort of literary novel for the YA world. And then we have a classic retelling. This is Anna Kay uh, by Jenny Lee. Um, Anna Kay, A Love Story, I guess, is the full title. And if you liked the movie Crazy Rich Asians, you would probably like this book. Hi, Lizzie! Oh, Lizzie and Stephanie, I got both Allens. Um, thank you guys so much for popping in. Anna Kay was like a straight-up rom-com. Um, it's a retelling of Anna Karenina, but it takes place in high society Manhattan. So it's sort of like Crazy Rich Asians meets Gossip Girl meets Anna Karenina. Um, and Jenny Lee ends up writing and crafting this incredible world that takes all of the things you love about Anna Karenina and fits them perfectly into a high society world of stilettos and lipstick and social media. Um, I really could not have asked for a better rom-com than this. Um, it was a great moment of escape for me, so I highly recommend it. Um, you guys can get any of these books on our digital libraries. Um, because, you know, obviously we're doing as much as we can to keep those uh, up to date and full of books you guys want to read. If you read Divergent um, or her secondary series Carve the Mark, which is not actually related to Divergent, um, this is her newest book. It's called The Chosen Ones, um, and it is sort of a dystopian portal fantasy. It is an adult book, not a YA book. And it takes place uh, 15 years after the Big Bad. So they've defeated their Voldemort and everybody should be living happily ever after. But it turns out, you know, once you've saved the world, nobody really wants to leave you alone. So they um, have been doing the best they can. They've become Instagram influencers. They've started taking up other causes and trying to raise money um, and all these social justice things. But uh, 15 years after they defeat the Dark Lord, the Dark One in this book, um, one of the Chosen Ones, because there was a band of five in this world, one of the Chosen Ones ends up dying by suicide because he just can't carry all of the terrible things that they had to do to win the war by himself anymore. Um, and once he dies, they discover that maybe the Dark Lord hasn't been defeated after all. Maybe he's just been waiting for exactly this moment. Um, so... It is a bit of a brick. It's really long, um, and it is definitely an adult book. But if you like sort of literary fantasy novels, this would be a good one for you. It takes place in Chicago as well as in alternate universe Chicagos. So it was a lot of fun to see how Veronica wove everything together. And then we have another fantasy, because that's my favorite genre, the House in the Cerulean Sea um, by T.J. Klune. So he actually also has a YA debut coming out. It was supposed to come out next month. I should check to see if it's still coming out then. A lot of YA books have been pushed um, for later in the summer when people will hopefully be able to go back into bookstores. But this one is sort of like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy meets 1984 meets Shannon McGuire's uh, Home for Wayward Children series. So it takes place almost exclusively in an orphanage for magical children. And our main character's name is Linus, and he has been sent by the government, which is where we get our 1984 pieces, to check to make sure that this orphanage is up to par. And the thing is, they don't really let him know before he shows up what kind of magical children are in this house. So yeah, there's a gnome, and yeah, there's like a green blob who's an alien, and all he wants in his entire life is to be a bellhop, but... One of the children is also the Antichrist. Um, and so it creates a bunch of problems for Linus as he's attempting to navigate this house and these kids and make sure everything is safe and up to code. And the master of the house, whose name is Arthur Parnassus, uh, has his own secrets about what has been going on in the Cerulean Sea and what they have been doing to keep these children safe. So this book was soft and warm and just like, pure happiness. Um, if you are looking for, for something whimsical like that, this would be a good book for you to pick up.
And then our last book uh, actually isn't out yet. It comes out next week. This is Kira Cass's next book, The Betrothed. You may recognize her name. She wrote the Selection series, um, and we have been waiting for years and years and years and years for her next uh, addition to YA. The Betrothed is a fantasy book, unlike The Selection, and it's about a woman named Lady Hollis. And Lady Hollis has just been selected by the king of this country to be his wife. So she's super excited. She's about to become queen, except then suddenly, right after they become betrothed, she meets a very handsome stranger and falls in love. And so now she has to decide whether or not she wants to rule the kingdom and have all of this, you know, power and glory and safety, or if she wants to... Um, find like follow her perfect match even though it is incredibly dangerous and obviously he has uh reasons for being at court that have nothing to do with uh lady hollis so there's a mystery element to it it's a fantasy book but there's actually not a huge amount of magic to it so i guess it's sort of what you would call a low fantasy um which is also what we used to call uh, Game of Thrones, because Game of Thrones didn't have a huge amount of magic. Oh, there go my dogs. We'll give them a second. They get really excited whenever anyone walks past our house. Because, you know, we don't see that many people. All right. Um, so yeah, no, that's really all I have to say about this one. It's a, it's a fantasy book without a huge amount of magic in it. So if you're not super into fantasy, I think you would still like it. It is firmly a romance and it has a fantastic love triangle and it is the first book in a series. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, if you are looking for something new, this comes out next week. And that is all I have for you today with all of these beautiful, fantastic books. Hi, dogs, we know you're there. Please just be quiet a little longer. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I have, If you want any uh, reader's advisory recommendations, you want us to recommend books to you, you can always go to lakeforestlibrary.org slash RA, and we will uh, pick out customized book recs based on the form that you fill out. We all get an email, um, and we can make sure we find something that you like. So... Um, please do that if you're looking for something to read. Otherwise, I will see you guys next Wednesday. I've been Emmy. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay home, and I will see you later. Bye.